So, yeah, so in today's ap episode, I wanted to take you back to really where it all began. And we looked at the player's handbook, PHB, and we also looked at Unearthed Arcana as well. And I found some things when I was clearing out the other day and I thought, wow, I can't believe I've actually still got that. And I, I put it together and I thought, right, I'm going to talk about it on the next um, episode. So of D&D books. And I have to say, you might be slightly disappointed with this next bit, because this next bit is not a D&D book. But I actually want to take you back to where my journey with D&D first ever started. And I have to say that I'm a bit embarrassed by the state of these. Um, if I knew I was going to be looking back on them, I would have, you know, kept them in better condition. So anyway, here it is. This is what started my journey into D&D. &D. This was it, into role playing and everything. This is where it started. It, it came in a box set. I no longer have the box and you probably see here there's two punch hole marks because I actually ended up putting it in a, an A4 ring binder. But this is where it started. This was my first ever Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. And without this, without this, I wouldn't be where I am today at all. I would be somewhere completely different to do with role playing, etc. And although I don't have the box, I do have the accompanying um, module that came with it, which was the Keep on the Borderlands, um, which had the infamous, the infamous Caves of Chaos in it. So let, let me give you a, a bit of background. So the person who's responsible for getting me into Dungeons and Dragons and role playing games is sadly not here anymore. He actually died, um, but he was uh, a boyfriend of my um, sister, my older sister, and he came round and was telling me about this wonderful game that he played. And I was immediately captivated by the idea of it and you have to understand that up to that point I had really enjoyed reading books and my first ever book that I remember reading was The Darkest Rising by Susan Cooper and I'd gone to a library with my mom and my mom had said to the librarian he doesn't read, give him something that's going to make him enjoy reading. And she gave me The Darkest Rising by Susan Cooper, and I loved it. And from there, I really got into fantasy and um, fiction. And I went on, I read The Hobbit. I, um, I think it was called The Wizards of Brisingerman, but I'm not too sure. I read those. Um, we, I read um, the Lord of the Rings uh, by taking the books out the library. Um, so we used to go to the library, get the book out and read it. I went through the whole, um, the Belgrade series and read all about the porn of prophecy, et cetera, et cetera. So I was really in to fantasy fiction and really saw it as a bit of an escapism from school, which I didn't like, wasn't a pleasant experience, but had this, this almost like this world that I could um, ex escape to. I'm just going to put these down for a minute. The other thing that I have to say at that point was that my, I have a very active brain and my brain had nothing to actually engage with and then all of a sudden, along came Dungeons and Dragons. And all of a sudden, there were rules to remember. There were dungeons to create. There were 
um, hit points and stats and that codes and things like that to remember. And my brain was just like a sieve. No, not a sieve, a sponge. That's it. What got the word? It just is it's very much like a sieve now. It was like a sponge. It really just absorbed everything. Anyway, I remember the guy um, saying to me, well, if you if you want to get into D&D, &D, um, the the basic set is available. Let's go into town and we'll buy it. And it was somewhere near Christmas because I remember that it cost me £8.50 and I had uh, an advertiser paper round and I saved up. And I remember my mum saying, if you buy this, I'm not giving you any money for, you, for Christmas presents for your friends or anything like that. And I just had to have it. And it, it was a really strange occurrence for me because I remember going home from school and then um, Darrell and Stuart coming round and picking me up from my house and taking me into town at like four o'clock. And I was just thinking, well, I, if I went into town when I was younger, it was always like half eight in the morning. And the fact that you could still go into town and it was quite magical. And I went in and I bought the box set and it cost me £8.50, £8.50. And in that box set, there was this book, um, the, the module, Keep on the Borderlands, and some dice. And my first set of dice that I'll have to find one day because I've still got them somewhere, my first ever dice set. And I actually, in the end, painted them and painted each of the number and varnished them. And I've got them somewhere. I'll have to find them. And I remember getting home totally excited and Daryl took this out and said, no, you can't read that. That's a module. He was going to look at that and DM the first game for us. And yeah, I, I got this book. And there's, as always, I'm not going to sort of like go through every um, single bit of it, but there are some things that I wanted to um, draw your eye to. And the first thing uh, was the cover art. OK, so this was the on the front page as soon as you open the book. And I can safely say the number of times I sat trying to figure out the rule, what's happening in the rules there. What is that spell that the um, wizard is casting? You know, it had um, a, the dwarf here, sorry, here, and this is an elf and an archer and everything like that, and absolutely wonderful. Now, the other picture that really really captivated me and i must say it, it is in it's very stereotypical but this picture i thought was brilliant this idea that people were uh, imagining their characters and bringing them to life and just you can see that uh, it was well loved there's lots of crossing out and things like that um, I, I obviously um, didn't agree with the optional um, <laughs> the optional initiative rule because I just like scribbled it out um, altogether. Now, the the interesting thing is now is that we only had um, certain classes. Remember, we only had certain classes. There was no difference between um, a class and a race. You just had classes. And you can see how well loved this was in the sense that look i've been through and actually circled the important stats underlined everything and then you know on the back as well and this wonderful picture of the little halfling down there and we we only had the classes of clerics dwarfs elves Fighters, 
halflings, magic users, and thieves. And that was it. That's all we had. We didn't have anything like um, a, a, a race and a class. It was just these races. And, and that literally was it. There was nothing else. Okay, and I actually remember in my teenage life actually looking at that picture over and over and over again. And I, re I, th I remember at one point thinking that this cross here, can you see that? I'm trying to move my, this one, belonged to the hooded figure behind. And it's not, it's actually the fighter's sword that I eventually came to realise. Um, the other thing that we had were... Um, alignments and I was passionate about alignments and I, I always remember this um, picture describing them you know which one was good which one was neutral which one was chaotic etc etc which was fantastic um, the the equipment list that that was it this was all the equipment but the, the fact that clerics could only use non-edged weapons, which was um, brilliant. Um, there were some examples of character um, sheets as well. And there was a, a huge amount of um, spells, etc. Uh, you can see here it gets rather battered and torn. Not too sure what happened there. Um, it's all sort of like sellotape together. Look, it, it's it's unbelievable. Um, we had a whole load of monsters, and this was definitely one of my favourite monsters, the Carrion Crawler. I don't know if you re remember that, uh, which was excellent. Um, a wonderful picture of the explanation of dragon's breath uh, which was absolutely um super um i'm just sort of like flicking through um interesting that the pixie and the rust monster was on the same page and some spiders etc and the the one the, the troglodyte wasn't that a cool monster? Absolutely unbelievable. And then it had a whole load of stuff about um, treasure and magical items, which I uh, I remember the, the potion of gaseous form, although I think I pronounced it gaseous form for a long time, which I'm sure is um, acceptable. And yeah, that, that's about um, it. I was just looking um, through. This was a, a piece, uh, like a reference sheet that you had. And because each class um, had different um, to hit rolls and things like that, that was all um, different. And there was a little adventure that came in with it, which was called the Haunted Keep, um, which I, I ran um, a few times, quite a few times. I do remember at one point I had created my own dungeon and uh, in the first room, there was always a plus one axe or something like that. And Every time I replayed it and went over and over and over again with it, it was very much a case that everybody knew there would be this um, plus one axe there. Um, so this was Keep on the Borderlands. And I have to say that this is rather tattered and tall as well. But this... This was a wonderful adventure. This was the Caves of Chaos. Caves of Chaos. And I don't know if, if you can see, but I've actually um, put 
some extra doors and things on like that to see where you could go. There's a wonderful picture. And if you've seen the new trailer, the new D&D &D trailer with, um, is it Chris Pennin from Star Trek? Um, there's an owl bear on that. And look, the keep on the borderlands. Introductory model for characters level one to three. There is the owlbear um, there in all its glory. Um, I have to say, I don't think I ever ran this whole dungeon um, as, as one dungeon. I don't think I ever did that. I think I might have... Um, dipped in and done little bits of it but it, it really was a fantastic um dungeon and i think we ran it um several times so that's sort of like my basic rule book and i apologize that it's in a little bit of a state and i just want to take a pause here to say what great memories i have of basic D&D. I've actually got the companion box set, but never got the expert box set. I think that's right. There was a toy shop in the place where I live, and it was called Preciouses. Preciouses, I think it was called. And that's where we got our D&D &D books from. And there was a, a little box down by the side of the um, counter that only we knew where it was. And we used to go and sit and flick through. There, there was a wonderful dungeon that I never actually bought, a module called Expedition to the Barrier Peaks that I always wanted to play, but never w was able to. And I think um, it introduced things like weapons, like guns. And there was a wonderful table that would say something like you would roll it to see which way the gun was firing, facing before you pulled a trigger, etc. And yes, yeah, so a really fond memories. But there's something else I wanted to show you. And I'm going to read something to you. It's like um, listen within wills, because I found these as well, and I suddenly remembered how creative I was when I was in my teenage years and how much I wanted to write and publish things and really, you know, move, uh, produce something to share with people. And yeah. That's what I'm going to talk about next, and we'll look at it in the next video.